The question of the identity and location of the last common ancestor of modern humans, Neanderthals and Denisovans, is one that has bewildered archaeologists for decades. Now a new paper has proposed a candidate, the nearly one million year old Jungsian skull from China. Interestingly, the paper is co-authored by paleoanthropologist Chris Stringer of the British Museum, who is one of the biggest advocates of the Out of Africa theory. Geneticists estimate that we had a common ancestor with the Neanderthal lineage probably more than 500,000 years ago. But who that ancestor was and where that ancestor lived, I think now is, is much less certain than I used to think. I used to think the common ancestor was a species called Homo heidelbergensis. Um, and now I'm, I'm not sure about that. And I'm not sure what continent that common ancestor lived on. It may have been in Europe. It may have been in Asia. It, it may have been in Africa. Stringer co-authored a paper proposing a shuttle dispersal model of human evolution, which directly contradicts his out-of-Africa theory. The shuttle dispersal model of human evolution is a concept that describes how early Homo sapiens repeatedly moved or shuttled between different geographic regions rather than following a single linear migration path. This model challenges simpler out-of-Africa or multi-regional models by emphasizing the complex back and forth movements of early human groups. He also co-authored another paper which states that the one million year old Chinese Yongxian II cranium lies close to the last common ancestor of Denisovans and of Homo sapiens. A new study titled The Phylogenetic Position of the Yongxian Cranium elucidates the origin of Dragon Man and the Denisovans, makes the hypothesis that the newly reconstructed Yangtzean II cranium represents a basal member of the Dragon Man and Denisovan lineage and probably lies close to the last common ancestor of that lineage and the lineage of Homo sapiens. In other words, the Yangtzean II skull may be the elusive last common ancestor and its placement in China is a significant challenge to the out-of-Africa theory. The Yangtzean skulls, which were found in east-central China, are an important discovery in the field of paleoanthropology. They shed light on the intricate relationships that existed between ancient hominins, including Homo sapiens, Neanderthals, and Denisovans. The discovery of these skulls, which are believed to have been Homo erectus and date back to approximately 800,000 years ago, offers valuable insights into the evolution of humans in East Asia. Exploring the morphological characteristics of the Jungsian skulls, as well as their position within the larger hominin fossil record, and the possible connections they have with other hominin species is necessary for gaining an understanding of these skulls. In Hubei province, China, close to the Yongxian River, the Yongxian skulls were found. These skulls, which have been given the names Yongxian I and Yongxian II, were discovered in an environment that was abundant with evidence of early human occupation. This evidence included stone tools and the remains of various animals. It is estimated that the fossils are approximately 800,000 years old because they were found encased in sediments that date back to the Middle Pleistocene epoch. This places the Yongxian hominins among the early representatives of the species Homo erectus, which was a species that was instrumental in the movement of human ancestors away from Africa and throughout the Old World. Due to the fact that East Asia has produced a variety of significant Homo erectus fossils, including the well-known Peking man from Zhou Kudian, the geographical location of the Yongxian skulls is significant. Furthermore, the Yongxian discovery contributed to this body of evidence by supplying new material that can be used to investigate regional variation within populations of Homo erectus and the evolutionary paths that they have taken. It is important to note that the Yongxian skulls are among the most complete fossils of middle Pleistocene hominins that have been found in China. This enables detailed morphological analyses, as well as comparisons with other species of hominins. The Jungsian skulls exhibit a variety of morphological characteristics that are typical of Homo erectus. However, they also exhibit some distinctive characteristics that contribute to debates about regional variation and potential evolutionary connections to later hominins. Jungsian skulls are distinguished by a number of characteristics, including a large cranial capacity, a robust cranial vault, thick brow ridges, and a receding forehead. These are some of the key features. 
These characteristics are consistent with the general morphology of Homo erectus, a species that is well known for its larger brain size in comparison to earlier hominins and for its more advanced tool use. The cranial capacity of the Jungsian skulls, which is estimated to be somewhere around 1,000 cubic centimetres, is lower than that of modern Homo sapiens, but is comparable to that of other specimens of Homo erectus. The size of this brain represents a significant evolutionary step in comparison to earlier hominins. However, it is still smaller than the brains of Denisovans, Neanderthals and Homo sapiens, whose cranial capacities typically exceed 1,400 cubic centimetres. Homo erectus is distinguished by the robust nature of its skulls, which feature prominent brow ridges and thick cranial bones. This is a reflection of the adaptations that Homo erectus made in order to survive in an environment that was physically demanding. In comparison to other specimens of Homo erectus from East Asia, the facial structure of the Jungsian skulls is relatively more graceful. This is one of the distinctive characteristics of the Jungsian skulls. The prognathism, or forward projection of the face, that is seen in some other Homo erectus fossils, is not present in this particular specimen, despite the fact that the face is broad and flat. The fact that the Jungsian hominins exhibit characteristics that foreshadow the morphology of later hominins, such as Denisovans or even early Homo sapiens in East Asia, has led some researchers to speculate that the Jungsian hominins may be a transitional population. Indeed, the potential of early humans from China has been misunderestimated for many decades. The fossil record of Homo erectus spans more than one million years, making it one of the hominin species that survived the longest and achieved the greatest level of success. After making its initial appearance in Africa approximately two million years ago, the species known as Homo erectus is widely considered to be the first hominin to leave Africa and spread to Asia and Europe. The species is distinguished by a number of significant evolutionary advancements, such as the development of more complex stone tools, such as the Aculean hand axe, the utilization of fire, and the expansion of the size of the brain. Indeed, Asian Homo erectus was a woodworking, fire-using, spear-hafting hominid who mysteriously liked to drill holes into stone and bone for unknown reasons. And these hominids appear to have been quite meticulous about their clothing, using stone tools to soften and depress animal hides. New discoveries paint a picture of a human ancestor who was more sophisticated than previously believed. The use wear analysis of tools yields several interesting finds. Analysis of the base of stone tools reveal that the hominid likely attached stone points to sticks, creating a sort of spear. It's an important step in human development as it involves putting together two materials, the stone tip and stick, to form a composite tool. Due to the fact that it represents a significant migration event in the history of human evolution, paleoanthropologists are particularly interested in the spread of Homo erectus into East Asia. There is abundant evidence that the species was present in China, with locations such as Zhoukoudian and Yongxian producing significant fossils and archaeological evidence. On the other hand, the relationship between East Asian populations of Homo erectus and other hominins such as Neanderthals, Denisovans and early Homo sapiens, is still a topic of ongoing research and controversial discussion. The potential relationship between the Yonxian skulls and later hominins, in particular Homo sapiens, is one of the most important questions that need to be answered about these skulls. In spite of the fact that the Yonxian skulls are typically categorized as belonging to the Homo erectus species, Certain researchers have identified characteristics that may point to evolutionary connections with the Homo sapiens species. The relatively graceful facial structure and certain aspects of the cranial morphology that are less robust than those of other Homo erectus specimens are examples of these characteristics. Additional hints regarding the possible relationships between Jungsian hominins and Homo sapiens can be gleaned from the genetic evidence which has been gathered from contemporary human populations. Modern East Asian populations have been found to possess genetic markers that indicate interbreeding with ancient hominins, such as Neanderthals and Denisovans, according to research conducted on ancient DNA. 
it is possible that these hominins contributed to the genetic diversity of later populations in the region, despite the fact that no DNA has been extracted from the Yonxian skulls as of yet. The Yonxian hominins are thought to be a regional variant of Homo erectus that remained in East Asia for a considerable amount of time. This variant eventually interacted with, or even contributed to, the gene pool of early Homo sapiens, according to one hypothesis. The relatively late survival of archaic hominins in East Asia lends credence to this theory. This is demonstrated by the discovery of additional fossils from the middle and late Pleistocene periods in the region, such as the Jinyushan and Dali specimens, which provide evidence for this theory. The fact that these fossils exhibit characteristics that are both ancient and contemporary lends credence to the hypothesis that East Asia once served as a melting pot for hominin populations during the Pleistocene. In addition to the possibility of relationships with Homo sapiens, it is necessary to take into account the Jungsian hominins in the context of other archaic hominins, particularly Neanderthals and Denisovans. Neanderthals are most commonly associated with geographic regions such as Europe and Western Asia. However, recent evidence suggests that their range may have extended further east than was previously believed. The Denisovans, on the other hand, are primarily known from a small number of fossil remains and genetic data that were discovered in Denisova Cave in Siberia. On the other hand, their genetic inheritance is found in a significant number of contemporary populations, particularly in East Asia and Oceania. When the Yonxian skulls are taken into consideration, the Denisovans are of particular interest, because both the Denisovans and the Yonxian hominins inhabited similar regions of Asia during time periods that overlapped with one another. DNA evidence from modern humans in Asia suggests that Denisovans interbred with both Neanderthals and Homo sapiens. This is despite the fact that the fossil record of Denisovans is relatively limited. There is a possibility that the Yonxian hominins or other Homo erectus populations in East Asia that are related to them could have been a part of this intricate web of interactions. Neanderthals are distinguished by characteristics such as a large rounded brain case, a prominent brow ridge and a receding chin. The Yonxian skulls, on the other hand, do not closely resemble Neanderthals in comparison to their morphological characteristics. Nevertheless, the Denisovans continue to be a mysterious group, and it is challenging to make direct morphological comparisons between the Denisovans and the Yonxian hominins in the absence of more complete fossil remains. In spite of this, it is impossible to completely rule out the possibility of gene flow between these populations, particularly in light of the growing evidence of interbreeding between ancient and modern hominins in Asia. Indeed, the argument for reclassifying Homo erectus, who lived after 800,000 years ago as Homo sapiens erectus, hinges on overlapping morphological and genetic evidence that suggests a closer relationship between late Homo erectus populations and early Homo sapiens than previously assumed. This reclassification also supports the shuttle dispersal model of human evolution discussed earlier. Lastly, according to another peer-reviewed study in the journal Science, human skin tone has varied for 900,000 years, and both dark and light ancestral gene variants are shared between modern humans and archaic hominins, such as Neanderthals and Denisovans, which suggests a shared common ancestry for this trait before the split of the three hominin lineages. And with that tantalizing statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. And before you go, please share, comment and check out the other videos on our channel. Thank you and take care.